Hi, Jonathan York, Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at investment markets. Um, certainly in the US, all eyes are on the, uh, um, the election there, November the 3rd. And it's really, uh, you know, it still looks as though Joe Biden will get through. Certainly the polls are all pointing that way. Um, but, you know, if you remember back in 2016, that was the case as well. It looked like Hillary Clinton was going to get in. But then President Trump came through in those sort of swing states. Now, present on the uh, current sort of polling, it looks like uh, Joe Biden is ahead in those uh, swing states, um, sort of Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, and Florida, obviously, are the sort of key ones. And certainly, if Joe Biden was to win those, and you would feel that he would, he would uh, get through to the White House as well. Now, just as interesting will be the Senate as well, because, you know, that's been Republican held. And if the Democrats uh, sweep the Senate as well, they would then have the House, the White House and the Senate. And that would obviously make it much easier for them to get their legislation uh, program through. Now, a bit of a strange sort of reaction for the markets, really, because at the end of last week, uh, we sort of increased uh, cases of COVID coming through. And a little bit of uncertainty over the election as well, you know, uh, sort of talking about President Trump sort of uh, potentially having a contested election and, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, challenging in the courts. Um, you know, the market was down pretty hard. But at the start of this week, uh, we've seen a, a pretty uh, impressive rally on Monday. And now on election day here as well, market's up about another 500 points as well. Now, whether that is sort of starting to price in the fact that it won't be a contested election, there will be a clear winner, and therefore there will be a clear policy uh, um, view going forward, um, it, we just have to wait and see. I suppose from President Trump's uh, point, obviously there hasn't been a vaccine yet, and that, that, that's going to be a little bit of a dent on his sort of, sort of campaigning and votes. But really, as COVID cases started to increase in the US, it's just going to be interesting to see how it does sort of play through in the, um, through their winter. Um, you know, certainly a vaccine is closer, uh, but whether we can get it before the end of the year, we're just not quite sure at present. Now, on the back of that earnings, you know, earnings season wasn't too bad, but obviously with the, you know, these uh, sort of rising COVID cases again, a potential sort of, uh, not, not sort of lockdown, but sort of uh, uh, more restrictions being placed on movement, etc. That is going to impact a little bit. Just a question of uh, how severe they are and how long they last. But most analysts and economists really expect that if certainly if the Democrats do get back in and Biden gets in, um, then the stimulus package for the U.S. economy will be bigger than uh, under the Republicans, and that will be a major boost for the uh, for the market going forward into 2021. Now, obviously, on the back of these recent sort of setbacks with COVID, oil has come under a little bit of pressure, and he's back now around that sort of $38 on WCI. Certainly, Europe and the UK are facing sort of fresh, uh, uh, fresh sort of lockdowns. Uh, if you look at France, France has gone into a sort of partial lockdown. UK as well into a lockdown. Um, sort of temporary, only sort of two to three weeks just to try to act as a bit of a circuit breaker and really try and get on top of this uh, virus. Because obviously if you look at it, you know, sort of uh, first of November here, first, well, first week of November, um, you know, if you can get this sort of lockdown for around sort of four weeks and get this circuit breaker, then potentially you have a little bit of a respite over the Christmas period.
But if you don't, then Christmas is going to be pretty tough up there uh, for Europe and uh, the UK. And for those who are pointing out the lockdowns really don't work, uh, you know, you really probably got to look at Australia and New Zealand. Australia is starting to ease it, its sort of lockdowns and sort of uh, restrictions. Obviously, Melbourne came out of uh, lockdown that was for three months. Uh, that was last week. You know, and cases are really greatly reduced. Then once you have those reduced cases, you know, you can start getting back to a, a, a more sort of normal a more sort of normal semblance of life, and that's obviously good for the economy. You know, likewise here in New Zealand, uh, you know, we've got uh, no sort of community cases out there. All the cases we have for COVID are being imported for people coming back uh, from uh, um, from countries that already have it. On the government, Jacinda Ardern and Labour have decided to do a deal with, uh, with the Greens. Now, not that they needed their support in Parliament, uh, but they sort of brought them into a sort of, not even a sort of confidence and supply, just sort of a, a sort of a consultative uh, um, sort of platform, if you like. And certainly with the New Zealand economy, you know, it's pushing along at a reasonable rate. You know, obviously it's helped that, you know, we have uh, managed to sort of contain uh, COVID. Um, obviously, you know, the, the next sort of big thing now is trying to get uh, some sort of tourism business coming back. And that will more than likely come from Australia and potentially the, uh, uh, the islands. Obviously, we've got that uh, sort of one-way uh, trans-Tasman bubble from New Zealand to Australia without quarantining. That's not yet reciprocal coming the other way, but hopefully, you know, now Australia appears to be sort of getting in control of the, uh, the COVID virus. You expect that to happen in the next sort of uh, four to six weeks. If that is the case, then that does give, uh, say, you know, tourism business a little bit of a boost here. The economy is going pretty well. You've got a, a, a pretty rampant sort of housing market. Obviously helped, I say, by returning New Zealanders coming from overseas that are cashed up looking to buy houses. You also obviously got record low interest rates. Now, with those record low interest rates, obviously it's, uh, you know, the, the sort of flip side is that savers suffer. So if you are looking for income options, there are plenty of alternatives available. Call us on 0800 867 323 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles and we look forward to speaking to you soon.